Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, crime, I've got for you my top 10 crime books that I read in 2022 um, and also I've got a cold. So yes, sorry if I sound a bit nasally and bunged up in this video. I've woken up very, very congested this morning for some reason. Uh, but I will crack on uh, and talk through, going from uh, 10 up to 1, my top 10 crime reads of 2022. Most of these are older books. So there is one book that was published in 2022, but the majority of them are older. So dating back from, I think, the 1930s is the oldest one. Um, so yeah, I will talk through them uh, and give you brief thoughts on each one. As with the top 10 horror reads I did the other day, I am cheating a bit because a number of these are actually series. So there's quite a few series that I've got into this year uh, where I've read multiple books in the series and I'm just treating that as one entry um, in the top 10. So first up, we have the Six Stories series by Matt Wozlowski. So I read the first three of these in 2022, and they're really very entertaining. So they're kind of a blend of mystery uh, with, a, with a bit of kind of supernatural horror, but it's the kind of uh, horror where you never really know if something supernatural is happening or not. So really effective. They're told um, in the form of a podcast. So the idea is that this guy is running this, this podcast called Six Stories, where he uh, kind of reopens cold cases, so mysteries from the past, and interviews six people that were involved in the, you know, in the disappearance or whatever it was. Um, so you get, you know, each, each section of the book is a different person's account of what happened. Um, so yeah, really interesting, really nicely put together. Some great twists in them. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to to reading the remaining books in the series. But definitely recommended if you're after a kind of. They're, they're not too heavy. They're quite light and entertaining, um, but with some kind of reasonably scary bits as well. So yeah, really good fun mystery series. Um, next up, uh, something that was definitely a bit lighter. Um, Appalachian Prey by Debbie Herbert. So this is a um, a Harlequin romance in their kind of suspense line. So romantic suspense kind of thing um, featuring a fantastic cover uh, with a pregnant woman with a shotgun which is what uh, attracted me to the book in the first place but yeah just a really enjoyable tense thriller um, set in the Appalachian Mountains um, about a woman who's um, she's having or has had a relationship with uh, the local sheriff um, but her family um, are uh, kind of moonshiners uh, and you know on the, on the wrong side of the law um, and they start dying and it's about her trying to figure out what's going on there's kind of a will they won't they uh, kind of rekindling of the romance with the with the sheriff character as well so just a really enjoyable and well put together romantic suspense novel. At number eight, then, uh, we have A Rage in Harlem by Chester, Chester Holm. So the first of his um, Harlem cycle of novels. So a 1950s uh, novel by a black author set in, in Harlem, as the, as the title suggests. Just a really enjoyable kind of caper type of novel. So um, not really a mystery, um, but about a, a guy who gets conned. Um, out of his life savings basically and, and about him and various other characters trying to figure out where that money's gone um, and get it back so quite humorous at times but also has a just a fantastic sense of place um, and some really rich uh, colorful characters as well so yeah th a thoroughly entertaining read and I'm really looking forward to reading uh, the rest of the Harlem books by Chester Holmes. At number seven another book by a black American author this time from the 1970s so this is Inner City Hoodlum by Donald Goins. This was Donald Goins's last book um, and I think it was I think the manuscript was found um, amongst his possessions when he died um, and I, I'm not sure how complete it was. I think the editors may have had uh, a bit of a hand in completing it but the first Donald Goins book I've read and I really really enjoyed it so um, a, a a kind of really colourful uh, and atmospheric thriller um, about a young black guy um, and his sister who both get involved in different ways with the the local kingpin. Um, so lots of violence, lots of sex, um, but just moved at a really good pace. Uh, really engaging characters. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm really looking forward to reading some more Donald Goins. Um, 
Above that, at number six, um, a book by one of my favourite crime authors, John D. MacDonald, so author of the Travis McGee books, which are absolutely fantastic. This is a standalone from him, Cape Fear. So originally published as The Executioners um, and then has been filmed a couple of times, uh, most recently with Robert De Niro. So a really excellent suspense novel um, about an, an attorney and his family trying to escape from a deranged killer who's just been released from prison um, and wants to get revenge on the attorney who represented him um, in the trial um, at which he ended up getting convicted. So just pure suspense from beginning to end. Really exciting, really interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, ahead of that, the, the novel from 2022. Uh, so this is The Heretic by Liam McIlvany. Um, so a, um, a book set in Glasgow in the 1970s um, about a um, policeman investigating a tenement fire. So this is the second in a series of detective novels that um, McIlvany is writing at the moment set in Glasgow. I definitely recommend reading the first one, which is The Quaker, uh, before you read this one because they build really nicely on each other. Um, but yeah, just a really, really good um, detective novel, but also has got a fantastic sense of time and place. So like the Chester Himes book, um, you know, focusing on a deprived um, area of, of a big city um, and the characters and the goings on um, in that area. But a, a brilliant sense of place. You really feel sucked into um, what it was like to live in, in Glasgow in the 70s, which was a very impoverished uh, place at the time. Um, Above that, a classic, uh, The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. So this is the first Dashiell Hammett book I've read. I really enjoyed it. So a, a brilliant classic uh, detective novel with Sam Spade um, as the uh, private eye um, investigating this kind of MacGuffin thing of the Maltese Falcon, which is this, this thing. And you, it takes a while for you to even find out what it is that various people are trying to, are trying to find. Um, so just a, a great kind of chase um, with all these different strands going on. Um, really enjoyable. And I'm really looking forward to reading some more Dashiell Hammett. Um, Above that, something very different, but another classic, uh, The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. So a wonderful psychological thriller um, about a, um, a, a sociopath um, travelling around, so an, an American guy who's in Europe and is kind of travelling around Europe, um, effectively kind of taking over people's lives and things like that. Um, so he's a, Ripley is just a fantastic character. Highsmith wrote a number of books about him and I'm really looking forward to reading more of them uh, to the extent that in 2023, I'm going to try and read all of uh, Patricia Highsmith's books, including obviously all of the Ripley books. So I'm doing that um, as a, a kind of long, long-term long buddy read uh, with Anne Novella, um, whose channel is very good and you should check that out. Um, so yeah, looking forward to diving a bit more into Highsmith. Um, I've read a few of her books, but but by no means all of them. I think there's about 25, 26 or something like that in total. Uh, so that should be an interesting project for next year. Um, ahead of that, another series. Uh, so the Philip Marlowe series uh, by Raymond Chandler. So I've read the first three of these in 2022. Those being uh, the, Big Sleep, uh, the Big Sleep, Fairway Lovely and The High Window. So I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them. Classic, hard-boiled detective fiction. Fantastic prose. Um really convoluted uh, and but but like intricate and enjoyable mysteries particularly in the big sleep the, the mystery in the big sleep the, the plot of the big sleep is just so complicated but expertly handled by Chandler and a really really entertaining series of books um, again I'm intending to carry on reading that series uh, and hopefully should finish it at some point in 2023 um, so we are at the number two position now uh, so that is The Postman Always Rings Twice by James N. Kane. Um, so again, an older book, this one, I think, from the 30s. Um, I'd never read James N. Kane before, but this was really good. So a really gripping short, uh, short crime novel um, about a, a kind of drifter who falls in love with this um, woman who works or owns a, a, like a roadside cafe um, with her husband. Uh, and it's about the drifter and the woman conspiring to kill the husband. But just incredibly gripping, incredibly uh, shocking and brutal at times, and, and despite the fact that the, the descriptions are not really explicit at all. But the, there's real power in James M. Cain's writing. Just brilliant. A really, really excellent thriller. So at number one then, another series, the Factory series by Derek Raymond. Uh, so five books in that series. Um, those being He Died With His Eyes Open, The Devil's Home on Leave, uh, How the Dead Live, 
I was Dora Suarez and Dead Man Upright. Um, so I just put up a video yesterday doing like an overview of, and kind of mini review of the whole series. But yeah, really bleak, really dark, um, really gripping, uh, incredibly graphic at times, but just a fantastic series of detective novels where the, the victims of the crimes get as much focus as, as the detective and, and the killer. Um, so really digging into kind of the psychology of crime um, and just has a, they just have a wonderful style to them as well that's really, really engrossing and quite addictive. I've really thoroughly enjoyed all five of these books. Um, some, of, some of them are better than others, others as you would expect with the series, um, but highly recommended overall. A really excellent, excellent series um, and definitely my favourite favourite crime novels of the year. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. I thought I'd go with crime. Uh, so we've got a nice pulpy old crime novel here, The Scrambled Yanks by Richard S. Prather from his Shell Scott series. Um, so these are quite humorous, um, quite, uh, it's kind of deliberately cliched, so drawing on a lot of the, the tropes of this kind of thing, um, but really, really enjoyable. So I haven't read this one yet, but I read one of the other books in the series earlier in the year um, and really enjoyed it, kind of de deliberately funny at times, um, but also just you know an enjoyable, well-constructed mystery. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about. Let me know what your favourite crime read of the year was. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.